In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, today is a great feast day of Saint Anthony the Great. He is a beloved saint in our church, and we all um, adore his story and his the the kind of life that he led. And maybe, um, not maybe, but it is it is good that the we just heard the gospel of the man that was born blind and. So let us pray that God would, would open our eyes and would give us new eyes to see him, and new eyes to see the gospel, and new eyes to see our life. Um, we need God to create new eyes and new mind and a new view on, on our life that we may, when we hear the word, it would shape us, it would change us, it would really transform us into people of his kingdom. When we read the stories of the saints, um, either we get so encouraged or we get so discouraged. <laughs> we can get into two extremes. We may think that this is so extreme, these are people of the past, They. They are not in my life now. I am in a different world. I'm in a different time, different challenges. It's not easy to, to just go to the desert and leave everything behind. Um, or we, we can get really encouraged and say, if they did it, I can do it. But I think uh, most of us will be with the, with the first group who just look at the saints yeah, we love them, we, we um, and honor them, we love their stories, but eh, I am busy with my own stuff now. <laughs> yes, I can, I can seek their help, I can ask for their intercessions, but still, um, let me handle my own stuff. Um, I'm reminded by this verse in, in Hebrews chapter 12, when St. Paul said that, therefore, um, also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, which the saints, and I can imagine that if, we, if you are running a marathon and it's a long, long race, normally you see people, or if you are running a marathon, uh, uh, people will be cheering for you on both sides of the road, uh, and, but they haven't run the marathon. They are, they are just spectators. They are just having a good time cheering for you or cheering for their friends. But in the church, in, within the Word of God, the people who are cheering for us, they already ran and won the marathon. So imagine that you are running your race because the rest of the verse said that since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run like a marathon with endurance the race that is set before us. And, and just think about this, these words. There is a race. In the marathon or any race, you choose. You get to run or not to run. It's your choice. But this race here, it is set for us. It means everyone here, every believer, every person on this earth is, this, is in this race. And you have to run. But somebody run the first couple of steps and just turns around. Somebody runs halfway and somebody runs all the way and wins. So the key here is that it is two things. Running with endurance, knowing what is set before you, knowing what is the prize, and you're not alone. You are surrounded by not just a bunch of 
spectators, but people who are winners. If you look here around you, all around you, and the stories of the saints and, and the heroes of faith in the Bible, they are, they are all winners. But the beautiful thing, they are, they were, they are human. And when we read the story of St. Anthony, I told you to, to pay attention during it. He was just a normal kid, a normal person who was raised by his parents, a good Christian way of life. And he grew up in the church, like all of us, hearing the same gospel, hearing the same words. But what was the difference here? The difference was that when he returned to his house, he decided to fulfill this commandment and what? Considered it directed to him personally. The problem with us reading the stories of the saints is, is that we start from their end. We just see them in their glory, that they have finished their race, they went to heaven, and they are called saints and martyrs. But if you dig in the beginning, very normal beginning. So number one, what made him St. Anthony? He took it personally. And I'm asking everybody here, and I'm asking myself, every time I read the gospel, do I take it personally, or I read it with, with a distance? Meaning that, yeah, it is the Bible, I'm reading it for blessing, I'm reading it because it is my duty, because I'm used to it, it calms me down, <laughs> whatever reasons, or every word, even these verses that are really hard to understand. Do you take it personally or not? This is number one. Number two, it was really hard for him. It wasn't easy. It, it, it wasn't just a prayer of praise and worship and prayer and comfort by the Holy Spirit and he, he did not live on cloud nine all the time. He struggled. He was bored. Um, the devil fought him by afflicting him with boredom, laziness. He was lazy. He didn't pray sometimes. Think about it. St. Anthony, yes, he was lazy. Why? Because he was a human being. And it's not me, it's the Synexarium, so it's not. Again, he was bored, he was fought with laziness, and phantoms of women, images of women. But he overcame the devil. The key difference between, and I shouldn't say this, but I'm, I'm just going to say it for the purpose here between a normal person and a saint, although this is not uh, uh, right, because the people of God are saints, should be saints. But by, uh, but by our standards now, unfortunately, we, we think that we are normal and the other people are the extreme or the saints. So let's go with this argument. The difference between the normal or the people who live a normal life and between the extremes is that they have endurance. They have endurance. I turn around from the first barrier or the first, the first you know, struggle. So back to our verses in Hebrews, we are surrounded by this cloud of saints, and we have a race that is set before us. But what do we 
we need to do in this race. St. Paul in the epistle to the Philippians, he said that, but what things were gain to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. These things that were considered gain for me by my standards, by the standards of the community or the culture or the world that I am living in, I counted loss for the sake of Christ. St. Anthony, he heard this verse, if you want to be perfect. So there is a prize here. Do you want to be perfect or not? Because many of us are so comfortable with their life. We are so comfortable with lack of perfection. <laughs> we are so comfortable with our weaknesses. It's fine. I'm just living this way. And the standards of perfection are taking a shift. And instead of holiness and purity and righteousness and living the purpose that God has set for me, my standards of perfection is being so normal like the rest of the world. What are, what are my standards? Do good at school, get a good job, make lots of money, get married, have kids, retire in Florida, and then you just die. And this is a perfect life. This is my dream. Think about it. <laughs> Isn't this the dream of everybody here? What else? Right? What else? And even we raise our children, you have to be a doctor. You have to be, an, because you, you'll make lots of money, you'll be called doctor. So the way I am forming the brain of my children is that do this and you will be perfect. But what are, what's about the perfection God's way? which is holiness, purity. I can be a doctor and I can make millions of dollars, but my brain is dirty and filthy and I'm addicted to pornography and alcohol and I am living a filthy life in the dark. By the way, I'm not against doctors. I love doctors. And I'm a doctor by now, so... so. <laughs> but... Think about it. Really think about it. If we, if we are true here, if, if we really mean it. Because you know what? In the, in the Mass, we will like, spend like five or ten minutes saying Benishti, right? And pour our lungs out and our hearts out and saying Benishti. Fine. <laughs> but what's next? What's next? I am still a slave to my sin. I'm not perfect. I'm not free. You can make all the money you can make in this world. You can be called all titles and have letters after your name. and You can be the most rich person in this world. But, but if you live in the dark and you are addicted to pornography or or, or alcohol, or gambling, or you're living a double standard life, you're just, or you just live in the dark, what gain is it to you to win the whole world and lose your soul? And this is St. Anthony. He was rich. He was so rich. But it was so easy for him to, like St. Paul, consider it as a loss. Why to gain Christ? So what's your values here? If you love St. Anthony, if you love the saints, and you read the saints, and you read the Bible, and you're a, you're a good religious person, what is it going to do to you when you celebrate the feast of St. Anthony today? St. Anthony doesn't need my celebration. He is already celebrating much better up there around Christ, around the throne. But what I need is to look at his life story and be inspired. What can you sell here in this world? 
Maybe you can go to extreme and sell all your belongings and go to the desert. But what can you sell? Can you sell your pride? Can you sell your love of money? Can you sell your lies? Can you sell your fake image that you're putting because you're so broken on the inside and you're just putting an image? Can you sell that? Can you sell your laziness and your boredom? Can you sell your comfort? Can you sell your comfort zone with God? Because all of us, we have this comfort. I know a certain prayers, I come to Mass every Sunday, uh, I'm a deacon, I'm a Sunday school teacher, I'm a volunteer. These are my comfort zone. It doesn't challenge me anymore. Matter of fact, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's what I do best. Okay, it is what you do best, but are you on your path towards perfection? Or is it you do it best in public, but in the dark, you're still struggling. You're still struggling. You are a slave. You, you are not a free person. Are you willing to sell that comfort zone with God and aim to higher places and to higher grounds and do things that you haven't done before and maybe push yourself to, to different ways of prayer, different ways of reading the Bible or applications? What is your plan in this race to win it? What is your plan? <clears throat> Here, St. Paul in the Philippians, and I'll end by that, is that he has considered everything as loss to gain Christ. Yes, indeed, I, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Now here is value system. What is your value system? Is the, is the knowledge of Christ and be transformed and be perfect, is, the, is it the excellent reward that you're seeking in your life? Or many things are competing with Christ. That I, I may gain Christ and be found in Him. I want to be found in Him. I want to be immersed in Christ. Not just being on the shores, being on the surface. I want to go deeper. <clears throat> Let me ask you something. Why until now we, we don't have enough um, people, whether males or females, are giving their life in consecration to God? Why until now we have not produced monks and nuns and priests from our second generation here or from our kids here, our children? Why? What's the difference? Why we are not producing St. Anthony again, St. Macarius and Athanasius and St. Cyril and Mark and Paul and John? and Marina, and uh, Anastasia, and all. Why we're not producing? Why we are just recycling the past? We are just recycling, reading, and rereading, and then, and then read again. Why nobody here from the deacons, because you love praise, or the Sunday school teachers, or the anyone from the congregation, said that, you know what, I want to be perfect, I, I want to go deeper, I, I want to give my life to God in consecration, I want to be, I, I want to live with Him and for Him full time, 24-7, because I love Him, because I am immersed in His love 
and he is worthy of my life and my dedication. No degree will take me away from him. No family will take me away from him. No love of money will take me away from him. Why we can't produce that? I think I, I, I can find many reasons, but maybe one reason is that we have developed this distance between my personal life and God, or the stories of the saints. Yeah, I can be inspired by them, and it's a choice. It's either take it or leave it. But St. Anthony took it personally. Go sell your belongings. If, if you want to be perfect, go sell your belongings, give it to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. How are we educating our children and, 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 and educating ourselves? What is the value? Think about it. Why we don't love God that much to sell everything and go seeking Him and chasing God? Chasing after God. Think about it as you make your decisions, as you plan your life, as you read the Bible, as you reflect on what God wants really from you versus what the world wants from you. Big difference. It's a path, it's, it is a journey. But it is a race that is set before us. We're either winners or losers. You can't stay in the race the rest of your life just running uh, in a circle. No. You will either drop off the race or you will either continue and win the, the race. The race of life. The race of your salvation. St. Paul said that, run for your life. Until now, you have not fought the sin until blood shed. When we are doing like some, some an Anthony, getting bored, having these images, laziness, are we fighting until blood shed? Or we just, when the first thought comes, okay, I just, I, I just give in. What am I doing with my struggles, with my discipline? Many questions we need to think about and, and answer. And I hope that this great day of the Feast of St. Anthony will be a day that will be marked on, on our calendar. But not just to celebrate the past, but to celebrate our life going and growing with God. Because Jesus Christ is the same as yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. He is the same. If you, if you really believe that, if you, if you want to be perfect, God's way, not the world's way, not your parents' way. If you want to be perfect God's way, first, discover it, knowing it, read about it, take it in, own it, and then seek it and run the race. And don't worry, you will be surrounded by winners, by winners who are already there. To him, all glory forever. Amen.